Congratulations on joining this webinar, which is aimed at thought leaders, speakers, entrepreneurs, and experts. It's all about how you can use your expertise, your knowledge, message, and content to leverage your authority positioning and your income by turning it into commercially valuable learning products and programs. Now, in this webinar, we're going to be covering what types of commercially valuable products and programs that you can build that with the content that you've already got, what the return on investment of developing learning product programs and products could be, how learning products and programs can increase your exposure, your scalability, positioning, lead generation, income, and automated passive sales. We're going to talk about how you can overcome some of the challenges of training, design, and development. We're going to give you the 12 essential steps of training, design, and development, how to organize your content into units and modules. We're going to look at the top four tips of what you can do right now with the content you you already have to start developing your own niche learning programs and products and we're also going to give you the tips on where you can start and what you can do now if you don't have any content yet. My name is Sarah Cordina. I'm the Managing Director of Main Training, which is an international training and training design and development company based in Western Australia. I'm an author, speaker, educator in all things training and people development and even though I've got blonde hair in this picture I can assure you that you are in great hands. Now perhaps you've joined this webinar because you know that you have a message, you know you've got great content, information and expertise that can help other people. Perhaps you already are helping other people with your message, but are looking now for a way to make it much more efficient, impactful and profitable. Perhaps you're now ready to tap into the platforms that the most well-known and successful thought leaders have used to build themselves such a strong and unique positioning. Now, we all know that there are more and more experts out in the field, so it's even more important for you to make sure that you're taking significant steps to stand out from the crowd. It's without a doubt that providing quality training and education in your niche topic is seen as the most authority positioning. All the big guys have courses, training events, programs and workshops, and they also have a plethora of learning products that you can buy, download and watch. Now you already have this in your existing message and IP. These big guys that are already out there doing it know that their learning products and programs are a clear and focused way to illustrate and demonstrate their knowledge, their insights, their techniques to the world. It's a way of communicating their absolute proficiency as the expert in that niche. To succeed, you do need to establish yourself as the position of authority in your field. You need to make sure that you are transforming your IP in your, and your knowledge into learning programs and products if you too want to hold such a position. Once you've developed your programs, the beauty of them is, is that you can use them again and again and again to continue to enhance your authority, reinforce your message and continue to increase a long term passive income. So what are learning programs and products? Now there is a huge array of products and programs that you can use to develop and they, these here are just a tiny selection of examples. So to decide which ones are best, it may be better for you to get some consultation on this, but you can ask yourselves questions like, who are your audience and what do they need? What do you want them to know? What do you want them to learn, be able to do differently after they've been in one of your programs? What are you trying to achieve with them? Are you trying to persuade, educate, change perceptions, adapt behaviors, or develop new skills? What content have you already got? And what is there left to build? What are the long-term plans for this particular program or product for yourself? Does it form part of a much wider funnel? And also things like how much time and money do your audience have? all help you decide which one of these and the many other options are the best for you. There are a lot more questions to screen the best products and programs for you and your audience, which we will cover in our Thought Leader Courseware Development Workshops. 
Now I have two personal favourites from these. Now I don't think that anything really beats face-to-face -face training and workshops. They really do allow for the maximum impact and the greatest transformative change. However, they're not always the most practical, particularly when you have a global audience. And it's also a time for money exchange, which means that it can limit the passive income and passive scalability. My top favourite learning product without a doubt is the Learner Workbook. Now, if you're going to invest time or money developing anything for learning, then I would say definitely choose the Learner Workbook. This really, really has multiple and endless functions. You can use it as a handout for face-to-face -face training. You can sell it. You can make it an ebook. You can make it an online course. It can be a free gift in return for email addresses. It might be part of a much larger sales funnel. It can also form part of the content for presentation slides and scripts for tutorial videos. It's got all of your content and knowledge in it, but it also has engaging activities and practical steps that your audience can follow and apply your expertise to their own circumstances. Really, the learner workbook is definitely king. And I'd say if you're going to build anything, I would go with that. Now, if you already have any of these, and again, this is just a sample, then you are already well on the way to having learning programs and products. Now, we recently assisted Robert Corey, who is an international best-selling author of a book called Feed a Starving Crowd. We helped him develop some of his world-class learning programs by using simple interview transcripts. So he interviewed some of the top thought leaders in his particular niche and handed those transcripts over to us. If you've got blogs, YouTube videos, clips of you speaking, all of these are great starting points for you to create your own niche learning programs and products. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what we did with those transcripts a bit later on that provide you with some step-by-step -step methods for what you can do with what you've already got right now too. So why should you be creating learning programs and products? I guess a lot of people ask, what are the return on investments? Now, I guess one of the reasons why um, I think that developing learning programs and products are personal reasons. And the monumental satisfaction that you get at the end when intangible knowledge suddenly manifests into a big tangible program. Holding that workbook, that learner manual, all that course folder that's filled with your own expertise is really such a satisfying feeling. It's a reinforcement to yourself of your skills and your knowledge when you undertake an activity like this. Also, the research and information gathering process is a really great refresher for you. It's good for consolidating all of your knowledge and all of your expertise, expertise into one place. It's very, very rewarding to do that. Now, doing this is also contributing to your industry and perhaps to your business. There is so much that you have personally learned from experience and from that other people haven't figured out yet. And you really, really can help other people benefit from that learning that you've undertaken. Now, one thought leader that I interviewed actually said this, guess what? It's your job to take what you know out into the world, because if you don't talk about it, it dies with you. You have to be the one to make this contribution to your industry, and that is the biggest motivator of all. Truer words once said. Um, another person I interviewed said, the process has been really self-validating. Getting all of my stuff out onto paper in order to help somebody else has made me realize that I have actually done a really awesome job in the last three years, and that I've definitely got something that can help other people. Now, obviously, there are commercial reasons as well, and one of those is increased exposure. Now, in a world where income is capped, if you're only exchanging time for money, then it's absolutely vital to maximize your exposure and scalability, which means for larger groups or multiple platforms of exposure is very important. Learning programs and products really do give you the opportunity for making a much greater and far reaching impact to you and your target audience. The more products you have out there, then the more exposure you're going to get. And this generates more public awareness about your business, about your products, and of course, about your services. All thought leaders that run good learning programs or have good learning products out there do see much greater volumes of inquiries and word of mouth marketing, which is less time and effort as their expertise is much more exposed. Now, uh, somebody else I interviewed said this, learning programs are great for scaling up. 
They leverage your time. They give you a platform to demonstrate your expertise, but allow you to do so for a huge number of people that you may not be able to, sorry, that may not be able to afford to work one-to-one -one with you. Now, having multiple groups of people attending your programs or positively impacting lives and businesses through your teaching and information is a surefire way to get people talking about you and recommending you on much bigger and much faster scale than what you get through just one-to-one -one consultations. The second reason why it's commercially profitable to develop learning products and programs is that it enhances your positioning. Now, having learning programs and products is the straight to the top way of positioning yourself as an authority in your field. It adds to your professional credentials, which corporate particularly and public clients absolutely love. It increases the potential for media exposure, which further leverages your positioning again. Now saying you've created X, Y and Z results for an individual or for a business is a story. Now, promoting a public program or a training program is a story. You can easily turn your training and education into stories for press releases. And I've personally had a lot of success doing this in the past. Somebody else I interviewed on this particular topic said that it's great for positioning by developing learning programs and products. If you've got one out there, that you are seen as the expert in it. And that is absolutely huge. The third reason why it's very valuable to develop learning programs and products is the continuous lead generation that it offers you. Quality learning programs and products create a lot of inquiries from people that are interested in your niche and interested in you. The word of mouth marketing method is the biggest platform for lead generation and there is nothing like a good workshop or course to make the most of it. This is also where you can use your products that you've already developed as part of a larger funnel for lead generation. You can drip feed modules to your audience. Um, you can give parts of it away as prizes or free downloads in exchange for a database of email addresses. You know, giving away is giving away value really is um, the modern way of developing the best leads. There's, there's no greater value than, than giving education. Somebody who I asked about this, uh, Julia Bramble, said that learning products and programs have brought her a whole load of new inquiries. She got multiple interviews for different groups. She got an article and she said she got tons of business. She says that by doing a course in something people want, all of a sudden you're massively raising, raising yourself above the crowd, which is what all of us want to do as thought leaders. And the fourth reason why it's profitable and beneficial is because it can increase your sales. Developing learning programs and products really is great for your income. There are many ways to make money from learning programs. One of the ways that uh, I found interesting is actually using your competitors to help you earn more and get more exposure. So you can do this by licensing your learning programs and products and selling them either outright or by charging an annual license fee to other experts or training providers in your field. The more of your training they deliver, the more exposure you're getting and the richer you get essentially for doing nothing. You can also charge participants a fee, obviously for accessing your programs or attending your workshops, it's the most common way. And honestly, it's really not uncommon to see two or three day programs going for five figures per person or more. You can use programs to form keynote presentations for high paid speaking engagements, and you can also use them as, as a funnel for selling one on ones and the more higher end consulting. They're also a really very easy way to very easy to automate. So this means that you can use them to create a passive income by selling these programs online or your products online to earn money while you sleep like this webinar, for example. By recording this, I can teach people and raise awareness about my expertise and services while I'm sleeping, and you can too. The final reason is your long-term income generation. For a one-time investment of your time or of your money, you can generate for yourself a lifelong passive income. With a small bit of tweaking, you can also then adapt your programs and your products for different audiences. And with a small bit of tweaking, you can also keep up with ongoing changes in your industry. As mentioned before, 
one set of courseware could become the script for lots of other products, keynote speeches, online courses, face-to-face -face workshops. It can become content for blog articles, a book, eBooks, and much more. One person that I interviewed, uh, Rachel Sheldrick, said that now she's created a, a, a learning program, she's always going to have that to sell again and again and again. She says that it's now a passive income and it's going to be there to be able to help people forever. So why don't all thought leaders develop learning products and programs? Why are so many people still not tapping into this yet? I guess the main reason is that getting it wrong could make you look stupid and getting it really wrong could literally kill your credibility and reputation. And this alone puts off many, many people and really ensures that they're missing out on all of the benefits that we've just talked about. There are four common challenges to developing learning programs and products. And the first excuse that most sort leaders have is the lack of time. Now with so many clients clamoring for a slot in your schedule, time is usually your most valuable resource. It's also, almost impossible sometimes for you to find the time for doing something as in-depth as developing a learning program when you've got so many other core business activities that you're trying to do and keep on top of to keep the business afloat every day. Now from the other time perspective, some people think that um, a really, really good learning program is one that takes a very long time to, get to do. So they think that the longer they spend on it, the better it will be. And really, that is not a way of measuring quality of a learning program. Now saying you don't have time to create a learning product and program is in my opinion the same as saying I don't have time to spread my message and earn a living. This really is your platform. So to say you don't have time for it is saying you're just you're not bothered to do your business really. Another barrier to developing programs is a lack of self-confidence. Now while most thought leaders know more than the average person about their niche, some of them still wonder if what they've got is actually enough. Sometimes we can be so consumed with giving value that we, we actually risk not giving any value at all. Now, either because we, we get put off by the seemingly huge amounts of content to develop, or we obsess about giving value and perfection so much that we end up over delivering and end up brain frying our audience and making them run for their lives. And many of us fret about whether our content is viable enough or good enough to meet expectations. On the flip side, the best thought leaders suffer from the curse of knowledge, meaning that they know their topic so well that they've actually forgotten what it's like to not know it at all. So learning how to simplify or translate your expert knowledge to be accessible to those who don't know it yet can be very, very difficult and often loses many experts their audience. It's funny how thought leaders can sometimes be accused of being egotistical, but it's this very positioning of authority that often leaves many thought leaders feeling like a fraud. The expectation of learners for you to know absolutely everything about your topic can be overwhelming and intimidating. And sometimes there's a concern that you know everyone else is already out there doing this or somebody else has done it before. And maybe you're thinking, you know, how can I make mine be seen as any different or new? What if people think I'm a copycat? All of these feelings of fraud can also be what puts thought leaders off. Now, self-doubt really can creep in on the best of us at times when we should be self-assured enough to just get out there and say, this is what I've got and this will help you. Our thought leaders can also get too caught up in the details. Now, I don't know how many of you um, may have been asked to do some training or deliver a keynote speech before, but this is really when the panic stations set in. I, I've, I've certainly been one of those people that legs it to the bookshelf, you're pulling every book out, you're, you're digging out every highlighter that ever existed, there's post-it notes exploding everywhere. <laughs> it just becomes absolute chaos because you're being driven by the fear of, I have to prove myself instead of just just thinking, I just need to be myself. Now, just like putting too much wood on a fire can actually suffocate it, overuse of endless content to prove our worth and protect our reputation can kill our training too. 
You need to avoid the tendency to want to put everything you know into a course. Less is actually best. So pull out all of the fluff. And I'm actually going to show you how to do that in a few slides time. You can also use um, all the remaining content, everything you pull out of your first course, you can use that for future releases. You can also pull together your more complicated stuff as advanced learning programs or products that can be an on-sell or an upsell from the one that you're currently building. So don't feel like you have to forget your, your really good stuff. Just minimize it and keep things as simple as you can. Deciding what to do your course on in the first place can also be pretty overwhelming because us thought leaders do know a lot. So um, knowing how to narrow it down is very important. Now, details and content are vital, but just knowing which ones to use and how to make your content clear for somebody else to learn from can be very, very difficult. Now you are an expert in your niche, but you may not be in curriculum design. And one more slide, I'm actually going to show you the 12 essential steps for training, design and development that you can use as your action plan if you're going to go off and do this on your own. Making it meaningful and valuable is really, really important. Now, you might be interested in your subject, but how do you make it useful and enjoyable for the learner too? Different people also like to learn in different ways. So you need to step out of your own preferences and make sure that you're choosing the best forms of communication that's going to engage everybody, but also without overwhelming them. How you structure it in a way that flows logically from one place to the next in a sequence that the average person can learn from is also something that may not be your area of expertise. Overcoming that chicken and egg thing is something else you also need to think about. So, you know, with knowing whether to create all of the content and courseware first and then finding out if it's saleable, or do you um, get your audience to tell you what they need to know and then build a program around that? I would say there's a balance in the middle because you are essentially the expert in your field. So you know things that your audience don't even know what to ask for yet. But in the same breath, you also need to develop something that they need and want as well. And finally, there's the lack of um, technical training development skills. This is really the final barrier for people. Um, the, the important thing is to remember that you do know what to say. You do know the content. You are the expert on it. Um, but it may be that you're not quite clear on how to make presentation materials or to construct engaging resources. How you want it presented and how you want it to look may be very, very different to how your clients prefer to engage with your content. So you need to make sure you figure out how they want it instead of how you want it to look. So here are the 12 essential steps for training design and development. So if you're planning on developing your own content, use this as your basic action plan. Now I've assumed already that you guys will have conducted your full market research on your product or program, that you will have looked at your competition, you will have interviewed or surveyed your target audience. You will have uncovered your audience's pains and their needs, and that you will have definitely established that there is a market and a need for your content. And the first one is to develop an overarching objective. So what's the objective for you? So that's going back to where does this fit in an overall funnel or in your other products and services you have to offer? What does your client want? Now, this is the most important, obviously, if you're delivering to corporate. And what do your learners specifically need and want from it? Second is your statement of philosophy. Now, this is the overarching why, your mission, the values, the purpose of your product or program. And this actually forms a significant part of your adver advertisement copy. Then number three is looking at your specific aims, objectives and outcomes. Now, there is a set formula and language and structure for this that really needs to be used. And I'm going to touch on that in the next slides. Number four. So for those of you that haven't heard of smart goal setting, it's said that goals are likely to fail if you cannot quantifiably measure its progress. And it's exactly the same for learning programs and products. How will you know if your program works? How can you prove it? How can you tell if your participants are actually getting value? So you need to create performance indicators so that you can actually measure your learners' progress. Now, number five is all about throwing out any duplicating content, packaging everything together in the right order. And then into number six is all about forming chapters, modules and units as a result. 
Number seven is about defining your training and learning methodologies. So you would need to know how you're going to impart knowledge and how your participants will gain it. What methodologies are most important and appropriate for your particular groups? Number eight is about planning what will happen, when it will happen and over what period of time. Perhaps you are delivering a range of learning um, activities or a learning, learning programs or products and they will fit into a wider schedule. Then you need to go through all of your existing content and organize it against each relevant learning outcome within each chapter. So this will tell you what you've got and what specifically needs to still be developed. And there is actually a very simple method that I use to do this, which I'm going to show you in one of the next slides. Number 10 is knowing whether it's a skill, a behavior, an attitude or knowledge that you want to give to your participants. This will guide you in how to build your resources, what resources to use, and what kind of delivery approach is going to be best. Number 11, we'll then fill any gaps that we've identified in our content. And finally, number 12, we'll think about our physical and visual packaging. Missing out on any of these steps will negatively affect your program. So it's really, really important that you follow this. There are other steps in between, but if you want to go with the most basic flow, these are the absolute essentials. All of these are things that you can Google, um, but uh, you, know, you can get taken through these um, on various online platforms, but you can also get taken through all of these one by one on our Thought Leader course development workshops. So although some of that might seem a little complex, not all of it is highly technical and you can make a start on doing this yourselves. So here I've got an image of one of the simple methods that I use for step nine, which is analyzing and sorting through your content and organizing it all into the appropriate units. So this is the part where you'd map out all of your existing content to each of your chapters or your units or your modules. And I personally use this very same method when it comes to writing a book. So all you need is some sticky butcher's paper, a ton of different colored highlighters and post-it notes. So each sticky butcher's page on here represents a chapter, a module or a unit. So put a title on each one as appropriate. Then type up your learning outcomes for each module and stick them to the top center of each page. This keeps you focused and making sure you're only putting content around that actually meets those particular learning outcomes. So each post-it color then represents a specific type of content, which later ensures that you're meeting a range of learning styles and learning needs. So go through all of your content and place it on your butcher sheets by color code, and please stick to one idea or one concept per post-it. So here is my particular color coding. Now you don't have to follow this, but you're more than welcome to copy this if you want to. So I use pink for personal stories or examples. I use greens for my own personal models, concepts, my own information, my own ideas. I use blue colors for other people's concepts and other people's research, other people's models and ideas. This acts as backup research and backup information around your own ideas. I use yellow as general topic notes, general reminders. It can be um, a more relaxed and easier reading fillers and themes and content. And I use purple for um, activities or exercises or major questions that people need to answer. Now, seeing it physically like this um, really, really enables you to see if you've got too much of one type of information, which means that you'll only be delivering to a limited portion of your participants. Now, ideally, you want to have an equal amount of each color within each chapter so that you can make sequences that build learning. So here's what I mean by a sequence. For every major theme or teaching, you'd have one personal or one personable story. So that would be pink. You'd then apply your own model to that personal story. You'd then back it up with somebody else's concept, your blues. Before they get overwhelmed, you'd then give them some easier, more general information to digest, your yellows. And then just as they're rested, you drop a major revelation or a solution, a green. 
and then finally close it off with an exercise to cement their learning and something for the practical people to apply the theory for themselves and I'll show you a picture of what that looks like in the next slide. So now obviously um, if you don't want your office to look like a giant Rubik's cube then you can use the highlighter function in a Word document to do this using the same color, same color codes um, but I personally prefer this method because I get lost scrolling through um, long electronic documents it also makes it a lot harder to see what combinations are going to work well together. It's harder in electronic documents to move your content around from unit to unit. Um, you know, whereas on practice like this, you can just literally unpeel your post-its and move them around the chapters. Um, and you also risk wanting to use everything when you're using a Word document. So by putting it up on the wall like this um, and using post-it notes, you're forced to limit the content only to the absolute best stuff and it makes you cut out all of the fluff. So I'm going to teach you a lot more about how to do this in our Thought Leader Courseware development workshops for those of you that do want to come along to those. So next I will just show you, this is what the sequencing looks like when you're developing a unit. Um, and you can use this sequencing multiple times within a unit or within a module to really enforce your, your learning. So again, there we've got the pink personal stories. We've got your green, which is your personal model or IP. Your blue, which is other people's concepts. My bright blue, which is how I've adapted that as my own take on traditional ideas. You have some filler or background information. You then have the BAM lime green revelation or major resolution. And then you have your purple, which is a reinforcement activity or exercise. So what else can you start doing right now to increase your positioning and your profits with learning programs and products? The first thing to remember when you're playing in this space is that you're an infopreneur, not an entrepreneur. Now, infopreneurs already know stuff, already know tons of great stuff. So you can start leveraging authority and income right now just by turning your existing knowledge into learning products and programs. It's not going to make you rich and nor is it going to help other people when it's just left sat inside your head. So share your lessons old and new. Every time you learn something new in your niche, share what it was and how you learned it. Giving away, selling and delivering your best content not only ensures that you look the best, but it also forces you to create more best content, which means more learning. And so you end up having to having more IP to sell. So to be the best in your field, you really should always be learning. To be the absolute authority in your field, you should be passing these lessons on to your clients as learning products and programs. Work with what you already have is tip number two. Now we used simple interview transcripts to create awesome workbooks for Robert Corey's Feed a Starving Crowd course. You don't need to have any special courseware or training resources to create learning products that your target will love. They just want what you already know. Now you can turn your existing videos and webinars into mini self-study courses, even an ebook by simply pulling out the top learning outcomes and adding in appropriate activities. That's all we did with Robert Corey's transcripts. What IP do you already have that people could learn from? And make a workbook with that and sell it online. What byproducts do you have as a result of existing IP? You can sell those byproducts as additional resources online. Compile your best and your most popular blog entries, articles or chapters from an existing book and turn them into a learning workbook or even a series of learning workbooks. You can sell those online, you can make them part of a sales funnel, you can have them as part of a webinar series, you can use them as part of a face-to-face -face program, or you can give them away in return from an e email list, um, or you can even just release them weekly to your existing lists. The biggest money is always going to be in the face-to-face -face training, which is where your ultimate potential for leveraging authority comes in. And this is why workbooks really are the best, because they cover all ground for one round of effort. You can use video as income generating products too. You don't just have to, don't just have them sat on an un, unviewed YouTube platform wasting internet space when you could be earning and spreading your message with them. Now it's not hard to get um, a green bed sheet or just buy a green piece of material from uh, the material shop. So you can make yourself a green screen, stick it on your wall and start filming some of your how to's as learning videos which generate income. 
Now, I'd recommend um, looking up Nathan Haig on YouTube. He's got some fantastic how-to videos for beginners on how to use your own green screen and make your own videos. So you really can start doing this right now with your own how-to advice without having to spend any money. Now, by using the right techie support, like people like Nathan Haig, um, you can monetize your videos and create high traffic on top of selling it as part of an online or a self-study learning program. So don't think that you've got to start from scratch. Just use what you already have and build from there. So what if you don't have any existing content, but that you know that you have value to give? So here's a super simple starting point. Make a list of everything you know and all of the things you do well or have done well in the past. Then write a step-by-step -step process of how you did those things. What exactly did you do? Now, here's just one example. Um, I've, I've successfully started my business from scratch in three different countries. Now, as a result, I recently got interviewed on how startup businesses can break into the corporate market. So by focusing my answers on how I did it, which is really what our audience want to hear, what exactly the step-by-step -step methods and processes I followed that worked, not only gave me valuable interview content that positioned me as an expert in that space, I also had a byproduct in the form of an article and an ebook with activities that's now a sellable learning resource, which obviously I then got to plug in the interview. So this is what you can do now. What have you done well and how did you do it? That is the first beginning step of developing learning programs and products. Then you can just fill in background content, case studies and stories in around those major steps. So using the step-by-step -step how you did it technique, um, you can then create yourself a model or a unique process that can become your own brandable and sellable learning IP. You can add in supporting documentation that helped you do that thing. So for example, um, you, know, you may have sales lists, you may have templates, you may have a whole range of other documents that you can plug in the workbook or in the ebook or in the course and then send people back to your website or landing page to buy um, those additional resources or those extra templates. So you can continuously make money from what you know, what you've already got. So if you don't have any content yet, just start by writing down how you do whatever it is that you're good at and, and how you achieve whatever it is that you achieved in. And finally, stop trading your time for money and start earning income while you sleep. This is all about automation, automation, automation. This is the great thing about a learning product and program is you can do it once and you can sell it a thousand times in many different forms on many different platforms to many different audiences. I've already shared many ways that you can do this with your learning products and programs. So with all of this now whizzing around in your heads, you may have a few questions and questions that definitely should be asked. Now, just like you, would hire, you wouldn't hire a butcher to do your tax returns, you should always seek advice if you're about to tackle a big job, particularly when it involves your future and your reputation. So here are some of the things that you should seek professional advice and guidance on. Um, these are questions that you should ask professionals and things that you should definitely find out about before you embark on this challenge. You might want to find out about the best approach to take and what type of learning product or service is the most appropriate for your particular niche and your particular target audience. There is no best type. There are simply best types for certain types of circumstances. It may be narrowing down and focusing on what your course should be about. It could be about ensuring a better learner experience. It may be to get help putting it all on paper, putting it onto slides or on particular online learning platforms. It could be in getting a structure that follows the adult learning principles so that people take in the most amount of knowledge and the most amount of impact from your programs. It could be how to get better results due to a design with progressive advancement of learning. It may be that you want to get help on how to increase your reputation from having higher quality courseware, how to design your content to be more easily absorbed by your learners, or how to ensure less refunds and complaints by giving higher value and a highly professional education experience. It could just be simply how to cut out the fluff and focus on the saleable learning points. 
Uh, by the way, I can help you with all of these in a free consultation, uh, which you can book on the Thought Leader page on maintraining.com.au. So let's have a quick look at what you can do right now with your existing content. Now, here is an interview workbook that we did for Robert Corey's Feed a Starving Crowd course. Now, above on the top half, you can see an example of what it originally looked like. Now, this literally was just an interview that Robert had done with a thought, another thought leader. And the interview was recorded on, in audio and was just simply typed up. So we were sent that before original transcript. And what happened next is, um, we, by the way, we blurred this on purpose just to protect Robert's IP. Um, we then removed all of the fluff. We cut out all of the colloquial slang and chat and edited some of the wording to make the thought leader sound even smarter, but in a way that the target audience could engage with the information easily. We then went through all the content and pulled out and defined all of the learning outcomes. So all of the things the learners will be able to do, think, feel and action by the end of the programme. And we then created activities and exercises at the end that would allow um, the practical people to engage, as well as allow everybody the opportunity to put the theory into practice for themselves. So this is something straight away that you can start doing with your own IP. So for those of you that want to get started, but would prefer some guidance and a helping hand, we are actually holding two workshops for thought leaders, experts, and entrepreneurs and speakers in both Sydney and Perth in the coming months. In these workshops, you'll get all of the support that you need to walk away at the end with a draft learner workbook for you to immediately use as a commercial product within your own niche. We are offering a 25% early bird discount for all bookings made before the 1st of April. So to book on this, you can just go to the Thought Leader page on maintraining.com.au. You can go to our Main Training Facebook page, or you can also go to our You Are What You Niche Facebook page as well to book. So you can see here um, all of the learning outcomes that you'll get, and obviously the best bit being that you will walk away with a workbook that you can already use. So if you're a bit of a procrastinator or you're busy Busy and be consumed by your day-to-day -day business, this is a great opportunity for you to get away and just simply get it done. Now, every single project we work on is completely unique and does require special attention and consultation from us. So if you're looking to completely outsource this altogether, we can definitely help you with that as well. As a gift, I am offering a completely free consultation to anyone that would like to know more and discuss their personal plans for outsourcing their, their learning product and program development for their niche. And you can book your free consultation with me personally on the Thought Leader page at maintraining.com.au. In the meantime, thank you very much for joining me and I really do wish you all the best with your infopreneurship ventures. Thank you.